Welcome to the U World Order Showcase Podcast. Your host, Jill Hart, the coach's alchemist. Couldn't be more excited to have you join us today. On this podcast, we celebrate the champions of change, the up and coming life, health and transformational coaches who are fearlessly stepping forward to make a difference in the world. Get ready for inspiring stories, practical tips, and powerful moments that will motivate you to make a positive change in your life and those around you. We're happy to have you join us on this incredible journey as we dive into the world of life, health, and transformational coaches who are lighting up the path towards a better tomorrow. Hi, and welcome to the U World Order Showcase podcast. Today we have with us Kathy Dirksen. Kathy is a curator of multi-author books. I'm really excited to talk to you about that, Kathy. Her mission is to support midlife women to rediscover their brilliance and step into new possibilities in their lives. Welcome to the show. Um, it's, we'd love to hear about how you got started in this and what your story is. So perfect. Welcome. Well, thank you for having me here, Jill. It's always nice to connect with new communities and wonderful to meet you today. And and yeah, no, my my journey has definitely been an unusual one. I always love to people ask me that question of well, what got you into publishing? Was this something you've done for a long time? And I like to say that if you'd asked me that question five years ago, I would have laughed at you because there was no plan at that time that publishing was even something I was going to do. And I had been in the middle of, over the last decade, I have changed careers, like completely changed my career twice. I've gone through divorce with two teenagers in tow, gone through all sorts of major upheaval in my life. I, I described it like I threw my life up in the air and reinvented it on the way back down. <laughs> and. I had been aware of some people locally here that were creating anthology projects, so book projects, and they hadn't really attracted me at the beginning. And it wasn't until they had one of their books was called Emotional Intelligence, Mental Health Matters. And that was, you know, I'd gone through those major career changes and the divorce and come through the other end. And uh, it just kind of hit me that I have a story that needs to be in that book. And, and at that time, I was uh, working a job, I was in financial planning. So my whole purpose really in getting involved in books at that time was that I felt that my story was one that could help other women who were going through similar things. And I, I would say it was really like a calling, like I felt this, this inner thing say, no, you need to go do this now. <laughs> and, and so that's where it started. And I found it to be an amazing process of, you don't realize when you actually put your story on paper and release it out into the world, it's a very almost therapeutic mm -hmm. process to it. And, and I found that I really enjoyed it. And part of it too, when you're working in a multi-author book, there's usually 15, 20, sometimes 30 people involved in the project. So when you think about it, you're suddenly landed into this whole community, a new network of people that you didn't know before. And I found it to be a really great way of, of connecting with new networks and people. And then I realized that it was also opening doors to opportunities that I had never even seen before. Whether it's more writing opportunities, speaking opportunities, participating in different events, just opportunities that came out of nowhere through being involved in these projects. And so 2019 was when I did my first one. Mm -hmm. To date, I have contributed to 14 best-selling books. And now it is the main thing that I do in my business. And I have about five more projects on the go right now in various states of completion. So it's <laughs> really something that went from not even being on my radar 
to really one of the main things that I do every day. <laughs> so there, they seem to be popping up. Maybe it's just me and it's becoming more, I'm, I'm coming across it more often in my life, but this whole idea of anthologies or, or collections of different authors all contributing to a single book. Um, how, how do you think that got started and what, what kinds of people would be interested in that? And just, I, I would say it bit. got started with the chicken soup for the soul series. Mm -hmm. That was really the first time that I was exposed to that model that I can think of. And, and I think how that one became so popular and people, I know I've probably got half a dozen of them around my house of various themes, uh, you know, the, the original ones and then the chicken soup for the mother soul, chicken soup for the, you know, there was everyone Everybody that was sold. part of that. <laughs> so I, I think that's probably where it got started. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the main things that attracts people to it, they say that 92% of us have this dream of being a published author but only about three percent that actually ever really publish it or become a bestseller and i think that participating in these multi-author projects is the fastest simplest least expensive way to fulfill that so by writing one chapter with a team you're working together you release that book you are now an international bestseller if those are the statuses that you we always do the amazon launch and international number one is always our goal and we've never had a problem reaching that so i would definitely say that's a good part of it so so that dream to be an author i think is a big part of that for people who are entrepreneurs it is an, an amazing way to be amplifying what you're doing so for one thing you're you're sharing your journey you're sharing your wisdom depending on the theme of the book with my books i always like to focus on bringing in people who who their business aligns with that project so in a way it is promoting their message is promoting their business as well as obviously sharing their tools and strategies and their story so it really becomes a, a massive business card lead magnet call it what you will but a great way to promote your business and really and, what builds authority for you in the marketplace yes yes so if if you look at different uh, uh let's use a coach as an example um there's there's a lot of coaches out there in the world and there's mm -hmm. finding those ways to differentiate yourself in the market what makes you different from this coach and that coach if there's a few different coaches in a line and looking at their profiles one is an author one is a best-selling author one is an international best-selling author one is a five times international best-selling author. I think people do give that some weight. Mm -hmm. And and these days it's almost gotten to the point if you are not an author and you're in business, people wonder why. Because it has become very common that a lot of people are authors. So if you're not, what are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah. And and really being part of a, a book publishing project is a great way to get started yes. writing. Your, it, you may go on to write your own book, but if you can just tell the story in like three or 5,000 words rather than 20,000 words yeah. or 30,000 words, which is like, it just gets exponentially more complicated if you're trying to do it on your own to publish your own work rather than publishing as part of a collective mm -hmm. with people that already know how to to make it a bestseller i mean it's there's a lot of pieces to writing a book yes and publishing and promoting launching and and i agree for a lot of people you know again people who start on this vision they're going to be an author they get started on their book I've talked to people who have been working on it for five years, 10 years, even 20 years. I've talked to people that have been working on their book for over 20 years. And mm -hmm. I find that being in one of these multi-author books where you just write that one chapter, it gets published, released. You are now an international best-selling author. And often it sparks them to go back to their book 
and they actually get it published, you know, within months. So it's, it is, I would say, one of the best ways to get started as an author. And once you've earned that title, that you are an international best-selling author, you can now use that. You can put it right on the cover of every book you do from there on, is that you are an international best-selling author. Yeah, and it's it's not it's not easy or inexpensive to publish on your own. Nope. And I'm sure that you get people that are like, well, why don't you just do this for free? Well, yeah. you can't do it for free. There's nothing in this world that's really free. And if you're, it's like people that are out there saying music should be free to everybody. Well, these people spent, the musicians spent years and lots of money on training. And it's like, and studio time and, and uh, uh, yes, yeah. yes, exactly. <laughs> For, just, if you if you want to go do a solo book, depending mm -hmm. on what level of help you need as far as the writing, editing, formatting, all of those things, you're publishing. looking at minimum. And of course, if you're going to publish a book, there's no point in my mind in doing it unless you are going to hit a bestseller status yeah. of some sort. So there's that marketing as well. So you're looking at a minimum of between 20 and probably 50,000, depending yeah. on those different support pieces. There is the old traditional model of publishing that I think people do get twisted into their mind of this idea, well, they're going to give me a check to sit down and write my book. But what they don't tell you is usually that check is actually just a, you're expected to pay that back with the sale of the books. And also- It's an advance. It's an advance, exactly. And, and what a lot of them don't tell you as well is that, yes, we're going to publish your book, but we're not going to market it. That's mm -hmm. up to you now. And usually or you need an agent. So just to get into the publishing. Yeah. Community. So yeah. now there's whatever yeah. percentage off of the advance that you're getting. So you better yes. darn well do yeah. a really good job writing that book. And they're not going to take just anybody because, you know, yes. Yeah. They're well, risky. My other favorite though, is the ones that say, yes, we'll do this for free. You'll just have to buy some books. What they don't realize is that you're expected to now buy a thousand copies of your book at full price. So now actually you have just paid $20,000 to be in this book. <laughs> All right. So but yes, when you're looking at the books, we've got, there's the different kinds of editors, proofreaders, formatters, graphic designers for the cover. We've got a whole slew of different marketing people creating the posts, releasing things, creating different speaking opportunities. There's a whole team of people involved in creating and launching and promoting a book. Yeah. So yes, it's just, it's not something, and, and you're right. I do actually get quite a few people who are shocked that there would be a, some kind of investment. And I do my best to keep my investments as low as possible. Right now, my projects are all under $2,000. And that includes that's everything. phenomenal. Well, exactly. So it covers everything from I work one on one with the authors, helping them develop their chapter, put it together. We go through drafts. Then we've got the editing team, like we were saying, editing, proofreading, formatting, marketing, <laughs> launch, <laughs> the whole team. So that's everything. And then when your book comes out and you're part of this really well put together a publication, you're you're not subject to the massive typos that are I'm a prolific reader and I've noticed over the last probably 20 years the number of typos in books has just like gone off the charts from you know little things like typos in words this never used to be a thing I can tell you, I, I've been reading for like 60 years now. <laughs> it never used to be a thing, but in the last, it's gotten worse over the last 10 years with self-publishing. And yes, you can go to KDP, you can publish your own book. You can send that book out and have people go through it, but they're not editors. They're not real proofreaders that that's like their thing. There are people that are gifted that way. And it's if not you <laughs> It's not me either. And I just like, I'm getting ready to have a, 
a, a contest for, you know, every time I send out an email, go ahead, hit reply, tell me which one I screwed up this time. Because I proofread it and I I make it 18 point font when I'm sending out these emails. And every single one is like, didn't see that? <laughs> It's getting to be kind of a joke these days. <laughs> but with books, I, you know, to me, I, I mean, people aren't paying me to send them my emails. But if people are paying me for my book, I would like to know that it doesn't have a bunch of typos in it. Yes, typos and formatting issues. You want to make sure that when someone looks at your book, they go, wow, this is amazing. Yes. Yeah. And and you really need help with that, especially in the beginning. Even people that are really, they've been doing it for a long time. It's, it's not the same as a low content, like coloring book or journal or something like that, that you might put out there. Um, and I've done a lot of those over the years. Yeah. So I know it's, it's, I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's doable and it's doable fairly quickly if you get good at it. But when it comes to actually putting a book together and making it coherent and making it, you know, make sense to the reader, you really need help. It's exactly. And, and I, I just, I, I love too, when you're working with a group on a project like that, it's amazing the connections and the collaborations and the other parts of relationships that come out of that. With one of my books that I did last year, it was uh, my original career was in science. And so I always have a special book for women that work in science and tech. And so one of the books I did last year was called Women Transforming the Landscape of Science and Tech. And so it's a group of women literally from around the world who work in all sorts of different fields in science and tech. And a year later, that group of authors, we've got a LinkedIn chat where that we've always kept in touch with. They're still in regular contact. They're still cheering each other on with different accomplishments. They're still supporting each other of, hey, I need help with this or, hey, I'm going over here. You know, it's, it's amazing the community that is created in these projects after working together and then releasing your baby out into the world together. Yeah, you're like parents together <laughs> <in> this, <laughs> this project. And and getting in communities with people that are kind of in your field, I think this is golden. It's yes. it's one of the the really special things about the internet and being global these days is you can have relationships and they're real relationships it's it's more than just you know i i met you and we worked on this project like sometimes it is with in business you know you can work on a project with people and then you it's like i really don't yeah. like you people and so we're never going to speak again um but when you're you're doing something as personal as sharing your story and and being real and and raw with with the other people that are in community with you, it, there's something magical that happens. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And, and, and that I would say is one of the big things that I love about these projects. And that has got me going into so many different ones because mm -hmm. everyone's got its own community and everyone's got its own theme. One of the books that I've got right now, that's just almost getting close to being released is called ripple effect of impact. Mm -hmm. And so that one has women all over the world from Germany to Australia and all through the middle. And again, they're all sharing what they're doing to create impact in the world. And so now they're all meeting each other and seeing what they're all up to. And I, I find there's so much support and encouragement when you've got a group of women together like that, who, who are all these leaders and, and, inspiring people and women that are wanting to support each other and encourage each other and learn from each other mm -hmm. that it is just amazing what comes out of these projects yeah and and they just they can touch so many other people and when you're when you're marketing from a position of not just you by yourself out there trying to reach 
bunch of people. When you have, and this is why network marketing works so well. <laughs> it's kind of like you have a whole bunch of, of people together and they're all on the same trajectory. They want this book to, to get out and to be distributed among the people. Then, you know, that you have 30 authors, each one has their own circle and they, it just kind of ripples out that way. And so that's, it makes it much more likely that you can become a best-selling author. Because oh, definitely, definitely. And, and part of, you know, the whole thing about hitting bestseller with Amazon, I, I like to describe it like it's a race with a, a bunch of different heats in it. Mm -hmm. And so really what Amazon's doing is throughout the day, they're having checkpoints where they're looking to see what position is everybody in, in this race. And mm -hmm. so really you're competing against the other books that are in that category at that moment and who's selling how many and how quickly and what's the activity. Mm -hmm. And so really too, when you've got 20 or 30 different people in the book, you can hit a lot of different categories because you are including stories from a lot of different categories. So one of our books, we hit number one in 14 different categories. So that's always fun. Yeah, that's really exciting. And it, it just means that you're you're able to get this information out instead of just like one narrow channel. You've got a broad selection of channels that you can disseminate into. Exactly. And, and a couple it's of the things exciting. that we're kind of adding into it now, too, is we are um, making it so that we can release each chapter independently as its own ebook. Mm -hmm. So now, even though you first participated in this group project, now you can also spin off your chapter as a standalone piece that you can now sell or give away as some promotional piece. And, and actually, just before we got on this call, I was speaking with another group that does audiobooks. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at stepping into doing audible versions of the books as well. So, you know, again, looking for those opportunities, how can we hit more people? How can we get it out to bigger audiences? How can we diversify how we're releasing it? Yeah. And if you have the authors reading their own chapter in those audio books, that, that would be really cool too. That would be fun. Obviously there's a lot of technical challenges that might go into that with the equipment and timing and voices and all that kind of fun thing but but yeah all of those things we're just starting to look at now whether those options and how do we bring them together but and, and I think too that's one of the things why I've kind of stepped into doing this really as the main focus of my work is because I do find that every author now takes it in her own way and promotes it uses it like everyone's got their own style of doing their business or or maybe not even a business. So a lot of women, it's really just about sharing their story with that vision that you're going to be helping somebody else who needs to hear your story. And so all those different kind of aspects of what are you going to do with this book? What's the value you want your chapter to have? Every single author is coming at it from a different angle. You could almost do pop-up podcasts. Yes, yes. And each, for each book would be its own little mini podcast. Only has 30 episodes. It's each individual author reading their chapter. And then the next episode's the next chapter. Ah, and there you go. Well, we'll interesting... have to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that might be a thing for you. Okay. So I know that you, you do help people that are thinking that they're, yeah, I really want to do a book. Really don't know what to do to begin. You, you're willing to sit down and have a conversation with people about, you know, how, where do you start? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and like I mentioned so far, I've been involved in 14 different book projects. I work with nine different publishing groups. And so I've definitely got a lot of experience kind of around the industry and who's mm -hmm. doing what. And, and so, yes, that is one of the things I do as well is help people at that beginning, figuring out how do I make that next step? 
and also clarifying a lot of these misunderstandings in the publishing industry that we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. And then I also do work with people one-on-one -on -one with their solo book. So that's also something that I look after. And I find that the multi-author book projects are such a, a great way for everyone to jump in that it is really my main focus. But, but yes, I will help people sort out pretty much every level of this and, and even people that are working on their own book and they just need an editor or they just need someone to help with the marketing or, you know, people are in so many different stages of their books. You know, I've, mm -hmm. I've got some, someone for everyone, <laughs> depending on what you're needing. That's awesome. And how do people get in touch with you if they want to? Uh, the best way. So my website, inspiredtenacity.com is the easiest way. LinkedIn is the main social media that I'm on. So if you're looking to find where I'm active, LinkedIn is definitely the best place to look. And, and I've always got my calendar link is right there in several places on my website. You can just book a call with me, jump on a Zoom anytime. My calendar is always open. Awesome. Awesome. And you do have some examples of books over on your website too, I noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So on my website, you'll find uh, I've got one page that lists all the books that I've been in. You can click right on those pictures and it takes you to the Amazon page for purchasing them. I've got another section that I call it my gifts. And on there, you can go and get some downloads of a few of my books in a PDF format and and one of the other things on my website, I've always got a page that lists the different projects I have on the go right now. So I've always got several different opportunities to jump into books. Um, the ones I've got at the moment, I've got things like uh, passion, purpose, and possibilities. I've got one focused on grief, helping people to cope and manage different types of grief. I've got another one that's focused on helping women that are going through career trans transitions. So different skills and tools that they might need for that. So always got different things on the go and there'll be more to come. Always looking for other ideas too. Uh, one of the things I do as well is go into communities. And so create book projects that are part of the community. And that way we can use the book to both promote the community. So be branded and titled around the community and then filled with members from the community. So it becomes a great way for leaders of communities to really be spotlighting both their whole community as well as the members in it. So lots of different opportunities like that too. That sounds really fun. <laughs> I never yeah, considered yeah. that. That's a, that's a great idea. So how does working with you look? If somebody said, yeah, Kathy, this is what I want to do. What, what are the nuts and bolts of, yeah, of this really exactly. look like? <laughs> well, it, it really looks like we jump on a chat like this and just clarify, you know, which project would be the best fit for you as far as timing goes and that sort of thing is always a big part of it. Then once you decide you're in, yes, there is an investment, but I keep it as low as possible. And then from there, basically, I open up my calendar for however you need to move forward. So some authors like to get a, do some chatting at the beginning to really clarify what they're going to write about, what their focus is. Others like to just go do some writing and then send me drafts and I give them feedback. So I really leave that up flexible to how each author prefers to move forward. And I'm always available through messaging and emails and that sort of thing for questions as well. So as a group, we are each working on our chapters. When we've got them ready to add a good draft, then we go to the editing team. They get all the edits finalized. You always have final approval on what gets printed. Then as a group, we go through the publishing end. So that involves uh, the marketing team creates posts for each one of us that are personalized with the, the book cover and our picture and a little quote. We're each involved as much as we feel we'd like to be as far as promoting it on social media, promoting it through email. On launch day, we always have uh, different opportunities for interviews. And we've also got summit opportunities that come up. Throughout the whole process, I'm always bringing in also guest speakers. So helping people learning different skills, whether it's how to be a good podcast guest, whether it's around speaking skills, whether it's social media marketing. So those kind of tools that I think a lot of women who are entrepreneurs would really get some value from those skills. So bringing all that together is in one big package. 
the book gets released through Amazon. Like I said, we do the whole Amazon launch campaign. Interna international number one bestseller is always where we've hit. They tell me not to say I guarantee that, but <laughs> I say I wouldn't quit promoting it until we hit it. So I say <laughs> I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so that's kind of how it looks and then we also stay in touch like I mentioned the books that I had out last year those groups were still in touch I'm still inviting them to these different training workshops that I do and other opportunities like that so it really can become this ongoing community of authors that you're involved in when it comes down to the actual writing of it do you have like a platform that you prefer people write on and how many words are you looking at or like a chapter well what does that look like well the writing generally is just through either word documents or google docs and then we just do the editing through that format most of my books are 2500 words which is about five pages four to five pages on a typical paperback book well that's not bad it's like a really long very doable post. it's all very <laughs> doable <laughs> yeah 2500 wow most people do blogs that are probably longer than that in a lot of cases. <laughs> yeah, like 3,000, 1,500 or 3,000 is pretty standard these days, I think, with blogging. Yeah. But Exactly. Yeah, that sounds really exciting. I, It is. So I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm warming up to the idea. Mm, perfect. <laughs> <tell> you. <laughs> so, Kathy, what's the one thing that you hope the audience takes away from this conversation? Well, definitely a huge part of it is that becoming a published author is doable and something that's accessible to everyone. So don't don't let you, the voice in your head tell you that you're not ready or you can't do it or there is all the supports in place that you would need to jump in. And, and as we kind of mentioned at the beginning of the talk, the bigger vision of what I'm working on and doing is really helping women to see that there are all these possibilities and that they are all opportunities that are available to them. And the world needs people. They need us to step out into our unique skills and tell our yeah. stories. And well, one, one of other. my favorite quotes is don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do that. Because what the world needs is more people who have come alive. And to me, that just sums it all up. We need to come alive. Yes. All of us. We'll leave it with that. Thanks for joining me, Kathy. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for tuning in to another empowering episode of the You World Order Showcase podcast. We hope you've enjoyed hearing from our incredible life, health, and transformational coaches who are making a profound impact on the world. Remember, change begins with you, and you have the power to transform your life and the lives of others. If you want to take that next step and unlock your true potential, visit thecoachesalchemist.com where you can find the three ways we can help you for free to spin your talent into gold with clarity, a system, and a plan. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an inspiring episode. And if you enjoyed today's show, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback means the world to us and helps us reach more people with our positive message. Stay connected with us on social media for updates, behind the scenes content, and upcoming guest announcements. You can find us on Facebook at the U World Order or simply visit thecoachesalchemist.com. <laughs>